I'm Coach Josh Nichols, and I got next. You next up, and you ain't been on sports like talk. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, you better hit him up. Look, you breaking next, and you up next. Keep the queens go hard. Rise the star on the big scene. Make them know who you are. You don't break a sweat. Don't settle for less. They put you through that test. Your resume that flex. Who got next? Who got next? SLT, ready to go. Who got next? Who got next? Living my dreams and all your goals. Who got next? Who got next? You can ask B. Jones or head coach. Who got next? Who got next? You next up, so here's my vote. Chill. Nation! Welcome back to another fire episode of Sports Life Talks. You got next a premier platform that gives exposure to the voices of tomorrow. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We are talking to rising stars in our communities who are doing big things and accomplishing big dreams. And today, ooh, 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 wee! We taking y'all to McPherson College located in Kansas and we got a dope one for you guys. Eight years as a head coach he entering into his sixth season at McPherson. We got the head ladies ball coach coming straight out of Blackwell, Oklahoma. Josh Nichols. Coach, welcome to the show. How you doing today, coach? Doing great. How you guys? Oh, we, oh, we good, living coach. the dream. Yeah, we living the dream. We, <laughs> hey, this this platform is growing, and we just keep showing up and yeah. and doing big things, coach. And we can't do it without amazing talent like yourself. So, hey, without further ado, I am your host, the mouth of the South, B. Jones, the OG, all thing Louisiana, Mister Yee is in the building. I'm rocking alongside my brother from another mother, my partner in crime, the head coach, the architect, the guru. The quiet storm. Mm. KT. Kev, how you feeling, man? I know today a big day for you, for certain. Man, in my head, that song, School's Out for Summer, and it's on my School's Out for Ever is playing in my head, B. Jones. It is, it is a beautiful day to be a teacher, man. Oh, I can only imagine, man. I can only imagine. We, we might have to talk some summer plans on our live show. We'll we'll plug that a little bit later for everybody. But uh, before we get into Coach Nichols' amazing story, we got to ask all of my folks from McPherson, Bulldogs. We got to go, dogs. We got to ask y'all to show us some love. We got to ask y'all to stick around. Join the show. Join the family. Help us to keep moving this platform forward because I'm telling you guys, we got so much awesomeness in store just for you. Just for you. Not for me. For you. And we're going to keep giving it to you. So in, in Sports Life Talk tradition, we need y'all to do us a big favor, Coach. Coach, we need McPherson on the count of three. We need us all to join arms in kumbaya fashion and smash that subscribe button. Is, is, is the dogs going to be with us? Woo, woo, woo. Are they rocking with us, coach? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right, here we go. Show us some love. One, two, three. Welcome to the Sports Life Talk family, and we take the word family serious around here. Listen, we don't do fans. We don't do followers. We do family. So if you smash that subscribe button, Welcome to the family. I promise y'all buckle up because we are out here and this is our year. But without further ado, Coach Josh Nichols, are you ready for the Sports Life Talk initiation, sir? I am. All right, let's go to work, KT. Good luck with this because this dude, he's kind of serious. <laughs> Coach Nichols been serious. Uh, I don't know, Ken. Good luck with this one, Kevin. B. Jones, if I had a nickel for every time you said that, man, I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Womp, womp, womp. All right, to initiate you into the SLT family, you got to give us your top five music artists. Uh, so I, I got a weird uh, kind of taste in music. I'm a, I'm a big jam band fan. Um, I grew up, my, my brother's seven years older than I am, so he grew up listening to a lot of 70s, uh, like British punk. So my number one is Clash. I love Clash. Um, and then Pearl Jam, just uh, me being a 90s kid and grew up in that grunge. But jam band stuff, man, I, I, I love uh, Twiddle and a band called The Hip Adduction. And then uh, because of my son, I'm a big John Mayer fan, too. 
I know John Mayer and yeah, I know Pearl it, it, Jam. It, it, Pearl I don't Jam. know Twiddle. I don't know Clash. It was somebody else. I, it's not weird, Coach. It's just, we, it's just foreign to us. You just got to put us <laughs> on game with it. So, 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 so for a person that's not a Jam Band fan, what's who do we need to start with? Because I, I got to go. I got to dip into your world now, Coach. We it's we got to go check this out and see what you're doing here. So who, gotta, who do we I mean, start? You're gonna, with? you're gonna start off with the Godfathers and Grateful Dead. Okay, heard of the Grateful right. Dead before. Yeah, heard of them before. I'm with, I'm with that. All right, Kevin. Good luck with this one, KT. No, you're not that. <laughs> you this are definitely 100% on your own. Like, Coach, we like to rank everybody's top five, and the highest you can get is five. And on here, we don't judge. We don't judge people's music and their taste. <sighs> but, oh, you took us for a ride on that one. So, B. Jones, the fact that he is rocking with Sports Life Talk that you got next series, give him 10. We give him 10 for being different. Hey, coach, hey, coach, is pumping it up. Hey, one more. <laughs> the beach house, we didn't have enough money for 10 on this episode. You gave me uh-huh. 11, so now we broke. Can y'all please give us our ding back? Nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Come on. All right, so <laughs> who is your favorite superhero and why? Uh, the Incredible Hulk. Growing up, man, I, I love the Incredible Hulk because you got, you got somebody who is just kind of almost just walking through life and then, you know, you make them angry and... The Hulk comes out, and all of a sudden, you get the super strength, and you you change demeanor, and that's that's kind of you know me with referees a lot of times. <laughs> now I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need some referees to corroborate that story, Coach. <laughs> yeah, you you out there giving referees the blues? I, I try not to, but you know, I mean, every now and then you gotta you gotta you gotta get. I gotta have fun on the sidelines too. I, I love it. All right, uh, Bruce Banner. Since every good superhero needs their own theme music, what would your theme song be? Again, I'm 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 44 years old, so I grew up watching this movie, and man, I I, I love Eye of the Tiger, the Rocky theme. I can go out there and start throwing punches at any point in time. So when I'm going to go work out, I'm going to listen to music while I run, whatever the case is. That's probably going to be a song that goes to the playlist at some point in time in the, that workout. What, what, what part of the song gets you the hypest, though, Coach? Because I, I just a, a couple of people have said Rocky, and I'm trying to figure out if it's that dun 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 dun, dun, dun or is it that dun dun? It's, it's, dun, that, dun, it's dun, that first chorus. It's that first chorus when it starts out. You know, I mean that first thing, and then yeah, I mean the whole thing. It's just it, it's it's the attitude that you have too. I mean, if it, it if you ever watch the video, it's so stupid but those guys are so serious walking down the street too it's like they, they got that attitude like yeah we're we're not taking anything from anybody all right so if you could shadow anyone for a week and learn from them they could be either dead or alive who would it be and why um you know th- this is a tough question um i would love to have the opportunity to uh my coach at oklahoma westland he, he's since passed i'd love to have the opportunity now uh, he gave me my coaching start, but I'd love to have the opportunity to, when he was younger, uh, full of energy, just spend some time with him. And, you know, I got him on the backside of his career. And, uh, but I'd love absolutely to have uh, a, a, some time, more time with Rocky Kent, my coach from uh, Oklahoma West. Rocky Kent. All right. So, what is something that basketball has taught you that you can use when you're not on the court? Um, I think it's a perseverance. Um, you know, I, I still I still like to think of myself someone as an athlete. I mean, this Saturday I'm going to go run a 5K, and those aren't good enough for me, so I got to run 5Ks with obstacles on. Um, you know, just that that whole idea of competition, competing against yourself, persevering through pain, through being tired, through the frustrations and the struggles. I mean, th- those things are tough. That's basketball that that's life in general you got to keep going you got to keep kicking down doors and whatever life throws at you you got to be ready for it so um that i think that's the biggest lesson basketball's taught me uh, that i use daily i mean as a parent i mean if you if you can't persevere as a parent and you're, you're not going to survive your kids are going to your kids are going to test you well what's crazy about that coach you said you're a runner so i was about to commit to mcpherson but i know you'd be running your kids so <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm glad you got it out first, Kevin. I was about to say, Lord, I pray (laughs) put a halo hedge over them young ladies at McPherson because y'all stomachs and feet about to need it. We we go run our miles in the in the uh, preseason. I'll run with them. I tell them, you can't beat me. You can't play. What? 
Yep, Coach, I'm are you ready. being serious right now? Are you being serious or that's a joke? Yeah, I'm being serious. Now, if, if I beat someone, because I, I run, I, you know, I run. So, okay. And, but you, you're pushing them. Don't, don't be too far behind yeah. me. Don't be too. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll get going. I'll stay in the back of the pack and start passing one by one, give them a little look as I'd run by a little bit, kind of, you know, hey, you don't want coach beating you. So that makes me run, run a little faster, a little harder. All right. What advice would you give your younger coach and self? Uh, be patient. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job of being patient when I was younger, but I, when you look back at things, you know, 21 years is a long time. And when you look back at it, you're like, you know, was I, was I patient enough with my career moves? Was I patient enough with certain players? Was I patient enough um, with a certain team? Uh, so all those things I think come into play and, and patience um, is something that I would give my uh, younger self some tell myself younger self to do uh, just just not be too ready to make a jump not to be you know not to take it too much out on a, on a young man or a young woman that is trying to trying to do their best and, and you're young you want to move up you want to win and sometimes that gets the best of you a little bit all right coach let's just say i'm a i'm a new recruit now I, I committed to your school besides running what expectations do you have for me as a player and what can I expect from you as a coach? Uh, it's pretty easy. Work hard. I, I expect you to work hard. I expect you to go to class. Um, I expect you to be coachable. Um, I expect you not to get in trouble. No. I want you to grow as a person. So I, 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 well, I'm telling you not to get in trouble. I'm telling you to go be social. I'm telling you to go out and have fun. Just don't have too much fun. Um, just be smart about it. Just, just be smart, smart about it. About it. Yeah. Yeah, smart uh, fun. And then when we're, we're, in, we're in practice, just work hard and listen. I'll, I'll tell you what I want out of, out of each player. Um, what, you, what to expect out of me is someone who's going to work hard with you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be bipolar in practice, you know, not just yelling at you because you're making a mistake. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make our practices uh, as a, at a tempo that we can never play in a game because, hey, referees are out there. They're going to call fouls. I don't call fouls. I can call out of bounds. They know these lines mean nothing in practice, you know. So we're we're going at a quick, fast pace, trying to make it chaotic. So I've got to work hard. I mean, I'm all over the place. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get ten thousand steps in a two-hour practice. You, know, so you, you one of the coaches. Step. You one of the coaches that be you be glossy. You be, yeah. you be wet everywhere after practice. I love it. <laughs> all right, B. Jones. I know I'm, I'm going a little bit over on the initiation, but I got hey, one more. You good? You good? You're good. And, and it's the most important one. It's the most important question of this initiation. I already know where you're going, and I'm excited about this question. Let's get it. All right, Coach. So, B. Jones and I, we plan on um, coming up to McPherson and watching y'all play. But before we do, we're going to be hungry by the time we get there. Hungry. So, what is a place that you would recommend that gets your stamp of approval? You know, McPherson ha doesn't have a ton of restaurants um, as far as, like, some of those local, local places that you just really enjoy. Uh, but there's a place uh, downtown. It's a sandwich shop called Nafi's. It's excellent. They got uh, beverages there too. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a good place to go hang out. Um, just kind of relax, good sandwiches. Um, but that's, that's where I would tell you to go. What's the name of it again, coach? Nafi's. Like mouth of the South? Like Mouthies? No, Nafi's. Nafi's with an N. Yeah, oh, okay, thank okay. You. Oh, thank good. Good. Because <laughs> uh, this sounds like I, I wasn't going there. I was going to McDonald's. I know it's a McDonald's, and I was going to McDonald's. I was, I was ready to go. go. No, I was ready to I, go. I was going to get him on the phone now. I hear enough, enough of your mouth every day. I can't <laughs> go to a restaurant that says mouth. Oh, no. So after you watch this show, please go to our website, sltugodnext.com. And there you can learn more about us and see all of our family members from our You Got Next. Uh, series. Speaking of family, the most important thing in life will always be family, and B. Jones and I, we really mean that. So allow me to reintroduce our newest family member, Coach Josh Nichols, to the show. So B. Jones, go ahead and take it away, brother. Coach, we super excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the family. I got to start with Blackwell, Oklahoma. I've never heard of Blackwell, Oklahoma. Put, put Sports Life Talk Nation on some game and tell us a little bit about you coming up in Blackwell and where that's located. Uh, it's a, it's in north central Oklahoma, um, right off of Interstate 35, uh, kind of a small community, uh, seven, eight thousand. Um, you know, it's not a uh, 
it's kind of a really blue collar town. Not a whole lot of go, not not a whole lot going on there. Uh, like a lot of typical small towns. Um, you know, trying to keep myself out of trouble through high school, um, and that's you know just not a whole lot going on in Blackwell. But it's a uh, it's a place that will always be near and dear to me as far as it helped me discover who I was going to be in life. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, is, isn't it a McDonald's, like one of the biggest McDonald's in the world out there close to that, to that uh, Bartlesville area? I don't yeah, know why it, I remember yeah. something like that. It, it's, it's, it's near Vanita on, a, I believe, I-44. Between it's like, like on the overpass. It's yeah. like when you're in the restaurant, you're standing on the middle of the interstate and yes. cars are coming up on the... I, I, I told you, Kevin, one of the biggest McDonald's in the world is right there in Oklahoma. I've been trying to tell him this for the longest. Kevin is a, is a huge McDonald's fan. All right. But anyway, coach, so where, where did you start Where did you start playing basketball, coach? Uh, shoot. I went to a, a small, like, a private church school. Um, so when I was, you know, kindergarten, first grade, I mean, it was literally a room and a gym. <laughs> a school, and they, they the called only, it the they called it the, the multi purpose room. Yeah, yeah, it was the only sport we had was 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 basketball uh, through middle school through high school. You know, I didn't finish off high school there, but uh, but you know, growing up, you know, you went to you went to recess, and if it was cold outside, you just played. I mean, that's that's all you did was play basketball, shoot shoot hoops. That's all you did, and so uh, just kind of fell in love with the game at that point in time early on. It was it was the the gym was cool. It had different levels of basket baskets all over the place. So even when I was in first grade, we go to the side and we could shoot on you know seven foot eight foot goals. Yeah, yeah. Well, coach, we got to talk about how you got into the coaching arena. That's 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 what I want to know. You know, it's the the more Kevin and I we di- we di- we dive into this this whole women's basketball phenomenon. We we are just enamored by so many interesting stories that's pushing the movement forward. It's, I mean, there's so many stories that the world don't have any clue about. And, 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 you know, we think it's women's basketball, but there are quite a few men head coaches, mm-hmm. men's coaches in the game, period. That's, that's, that's part of this, this whole, this whole uh, amazing, talented uh, sport. So coach, how, how did you get involved with actually coaching on the women's side of the game? Um, so I, I was up in Iowa as an assistant coach at Iowa Wesleyan uh, College, and uh, you know my parents obviously still in Oklahoma had some health issues. Um, I took an assistant job back in uh, Oklahoma at a, at a small school and uh, Bacon College, and um, the idea I was kind of the reason why I went there and took that job is the head coach is going to be phased out as just the AD, and I was in a couple of years I was going to be the head coach. And uh, kind of one of those, yeah, that was a great plan until someone came along and changed it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we got a new president, and that wasn't his idea. And so um, about that time, uh, we had a uh, change on the women's side. Uh, and uh, our AD, who was the head coach, called me in. and was like, hey, I, I promised you an opportunity to be a head coach. If you want, it, if you want this job, it is yours. And uh, I, I had I had thought about it many a times. I I coached a lot. I went to a lot of work, a lot of camps, you know, high school girls camps, things like that, just to see the differences in the game. Um, I found out there's not a whole lot of differences in in, in the game. Obviously, we're not running out of the oops for dunks, but um, it's it's a little bit more strategic in my opinion than the guys' game now. Um, but you know. I took that opportunity and ran with it. I was I was blessed my first year. I got a great transfer that just hey took everything off my shoulders and like I'm we're, we're going to do this together, Coach. This is my last year, um, my my third beginning, so to speak. It was at her her third school, and she took complete control over that team. And and then when she graduated, I, I realized what some of the fuss was about, some of the drama and things like that that go on with the with on the women's side. So. Um, but man, it was, it's been a fun ride. Um, I can't think of very many jobs I would switch back to the men's side for. 
That's what I was going. I was going to ask you: Is this a permanent fixture? Have you found yourself like, "Hey, I love this game so much. I'm, I, I'm, I'm stuck in this thing because I, I find myself it's difficult to even sometimes schedule shows with other other sports because I love the, I love the females game so much. I just always want to talk to a female coach or a female hooper just so I can I can keep spreading the message of the game. But have, have you found yourself like, man, forget the dunks because the best basketball y'all gonna see is the women's game. Yeah, I, I pretty much have, uh, after probably two or three seasons, I, I kind of told my wife, yeah, I don't think I'm going to ever go back. Um, I've had opportunities to take other men's jobs and I've turned them down. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I really enjoy uh, what, what I found on the women's side is they want to be coached. They want to be coached hard. Yep. They don't want, they don't want you to take it easy on them. Now they're going to try to push your buttons because you know, I'm a dude. So they're going to try to use their use their lady ways on me but you know it's i have a daughter she tries the same thing on me and I'm yeah, yeah. Tonight, so it's one of those things where like hey we, we just i'm gonna coach you hard i don't care if you're male female uh i'm gonna coach you the same way I'm gonna, I'm gonna yell at you just the same i'm gonna treat you just the same and i'm gonna try to make an impact on your life in a positive way just the same doesn't matter who you are now, Coach, you co- you come from a small town, so you, you you talk about running with them. You talk about drenching in 10,000 steps at practice. So I already know for a fact you are not uh, afraid of any hard work, right? So we're, we're looking at a day and age, and let's just say that these kids are different, okay? Let's just say that we've gone through some changes, and we got NIL now. We got uh, mental health awareness. It's like so many changes. Like... I, I'm, I'm curious, if we were to pull one of these young ladies to the side, how would they describe Coach Josh Nicholson? Because I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm scared to death of you, Coach. Like, I'm looking, you got me, to, you, when you start talking about I'm running, if you beat me running, I was like, Lord have mercy. I don't even know if we need to drive up there or not. But uh, <laughs> but no, nah, Coach, no, nah, for real, though. But what, what, how, would, how would the young ladies describe playing for a Josh Nichols? Uh, I, I, I think for the most part, everyone would say we're going to have fun. Because hey, listen, we're, we're not going. I'm not. I've seen a couple of kids that go play overseas. We're not going to make a million dollars doing this. I'm not. They're not. So we got to have fun first and foremost. Um, they're they're going to tell you I'm going to take the classroom seriously because that's how you're going to make the money. Getting yeah. that degree, walk across that stage. That that's that's your money. That's your paycheck. Um, but at the same time, we're going to be very competitive. We're going we're going to work hard, and I'm going to be someone who pushes them. Um, at the same and, and and part of that too though is I got to care about them. I can't get them to work hard if I don't care. If I don't know, if I don't know my players personally, if I don't know their families personally, if I don't take the time to get to know them and care about the things they care about, then they ain't gonna do that, nothing for me. So I think right. that, I, that I, I care about them too. And you know, every day we come into practice, I'm I'm pushing the envelope a little bit, trying to get them to share more, share more. Because yep. how can you build anything? unless you trust one another and you can't trust one another if you're holding stuff back from each other. Well, let's dig a little bit deeper because it's one thing where we talk about people following the game, but when you talk to an average person out of the gas station, the first thing that's just going to come to their mind is the Caitlin Clarks and the, mm-hmm. and the Angel Reese's. And we talking about, these are big, these are big names. These are the Don Staley's, the Geno's, but I want to, I want to dig into, some of these other levels, because as I learn, the more and more I learn, I'm, I'm getting educated, ladies and gentlemen, just like y'all. Are. I'm getting educated on the women's game. And the more I learn that there are so many different levels to this, but each level has value. Right. And when you talk about a college like Miss Pearson, you're talking about what could be a small town. Like you said, there's not too many restaurants. It's it's, it's considered what is this? It's Division two. It's Division two or it's NAIA. 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 It's an NAIA school. But these are off, you're offering money, coach. You got a, a, a viable product, a viable uh, a opportunity for some young lady who, who who you can offer this to, right? So in your in your mind, like pitch us on NAIA and why should some of these 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 student athletes not become demoralized when they don't get the the huge power five offers, right? T- tell us a little bit more about the changes in the in the game at your level and where you see it going. You know, at our level, it, it's it's c- crazy competitive. Um, you know, I mean, it, you look at the top, uh, you know, the top twenty-five, and, and, and you're going you're going to find that there's it's all a little bit different. You're going to have some really good athletic teams. You have a bunch of D one, D two bounce back on some teams. You got like in our league, Sterling College. Uh, they're going to have they're going to draw a an, an hour radius around Sterling, Kansas, 
and I got a bunch of small town kids that are gonna kick your butt. You know, I mean, <laughs> so what you find is everyone finds their little niche. There is no, I mean, recruit. It's all about recruiting and finding what what fits your team. And it's just, you know, that's the way. That's how I see the NAI is. You got to find it for you because while I do have scholarship money, I don't have the same things that you know that's going to attract an Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark. So we got to right, find. Right. You know, it's it's not going out and picking. Um, you know, you you walk into an AU tournament in the gym in the summertime and go, "Those are the five kids we want. We're gonna stick on them." No, you you better you better cast a, a wide net and go, "Okay, we we want this kid, this kid, and this kid, but we'll settle for this one, this one. If we don't get them, hopefully it's this one, this one, this one." And so you you've got to be prepared on the recruiting end to be told no. I mean, so many times it's 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 for young coaches that can be really tough. But, you know, I mean, I've been doing this long enough. And at this at the NAI level for uh, 18 of those 21 years, and it's, it, it's on to the next one, on to the next one, on to the next one. Well, I tell you what, Coach, I, I uh, again, I got to tell on myself a little bit. I, I, I was anti-AAU uh, <laughs> previously. I didn't understand the value in AAU. I kind of I kind of heard from the, the Kobe's and some of these other p- people about AAU. But uh, Kevin and I, we went out to our first AAU games over the summer. Um, and I'm absolutely head over heels AAU. To me, that would seem like the, the life's blood of what you do, Coach. I mean, do you spend a lot of time at the circuit games or – or a lot of times at these events trying to find talent, or do you go off of the the, the modern day social media huddle type recruitments? Or I, I don't know what it's called on the on the girls game, but you, are yeah. you looking at more highlights, or are you or do you find yourself putting asterisks by these tournament dates so you can go out there and really get to know these kids and and their capabilities? Yeah, for me, there's different levels. You know, I think there's there's a lot of value in going to these tournaments. Um, well, the other thing I found though, there's there's so many of these coaches, and I don't want to say coaches, these AU programs that are trying to make money off kids and mm. sell and sell on their parents that this is the only way you're going to be seen. And it's not the only way they're going to be seen. But there's there's a lot of value in finding the right AU program and the right travel ball team, whatever, whatever you're gonna wherever you're gonna play, and hook up with them that are gonna have the, your best interests in mind. I, I tell I tell a lot of kids all the time, like you know, if you're if you're from Kansas City, you know, it's three hours from us, and you want to stay within five hours of Kansas City, why are you going to Orlando? Because I'm not going to Orlando to watch a turn. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to Kansas City to watch a turn. Right, right. Kansas. Omaha, maybe. Yeah, right. Omaha. Yeah, yeah you know, I got you. So you know, you you, you gotta ha- have an understanding of like what's what's in this for me. What am I paying for? You know, I mean. The bottom line is, is is money, right? So parents parents will try to do these things for their kids because they've been sold that this is the only way, while it's not. I mean I mean I get I get emails daily from coaches from kids. And you know, we have a huddle account. Boom, I just go type in a name, pull out a highlight, and I'm watching highlight I'm watching the highlight. Yeah. Um, I do a lot of camps. We have prospect camps now at our, our own place. I do a lot of camps. I love getting in front of kids. Not just watching them play, but coaching them. You know, I, I love the opportunities to coach kids, even if it's for a day, a couple hours. That gives me an that gives me an opportunity to coach them and go, okay, man, they may not be as skilled as these players over here that's at this AU tournament, but I know they'll work for them, and I don't know these other kids will. And so I'd rather take someone I have a relationship with already, who knows that hey, coach is a little crazy, he's going to yell a lot. He's gonna tell a lot of stupid jokes. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a dad. I got I, mean, I got a I got a 19 and a six year old. I'm a dad. I got a lot of dumb dad jokes, and I'm gonna tell them all through practice. You know, so having that understanding and having that relationship, I think, is very important. We we we've got to have that in the recruiting aspect to sell what we're trying to sell. It's got it's well, got to be a relationship. Well, coach, you finna enjoy this then, because we're gonna keep that energy going. Last question: If I, me and Kevin, we on our way. We coming, McPherson. What are we gonna see out of this McPherson team, and why? Why should a kid that's watching this video right now, why should they come and play for Coach Nick? Because I'm not afraid to play anybody. Uh, as far as you know, I'll probably start, I'm, I have an opportunity to start two freshmen this year. We're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna be young, and that means we're gonna make a lot of mistakes, and we're gonna roll with it. We're gonna grow with this team. Um, while I have, while I think we could have two freshmen starting, we could have another three or four playing major Mets. Um, so 
you know, if you, you earn what you get and it's bottom line, you earn what you get. And if you earn it, you're going to get it. I don't care if you're a freshman or a fifth year senior or a sixth year senior in some cases, um, you know, you, you work your butt off and you're going to find your way on the court. You play defense, you're going to find your way on the court. Uh, we're going to play fast. We're going to play chaotic. We're going to be in your pants uh, on defense. You know, we're going to try to trap you everywhere you go. We're going to try to get a bunch of traps in. We won't play, you know, I, so one thing about me, I'm Native American. I'm Chickasaw. I'm proud of it. Okay. There's a thing called res ball. We're going to play fast. You know, we're not going to chuck as many, as many threes as, as some, as some natives do, but man, we're, we're going to, we're going to try to trap you and get up and down the court as quickly as possible. And if you're a freshman, you can get that done. You're in. If you're a senior, you can get that done. You're in. I, I absolutely love that. So, ladies, start running now so when you get to campus, you can be Coach Nick and running around his track because you're going to be running and you're going to have some fun and you're going to get on that court. All right, Coach. <laughs> Welcome to the championship rounds. This is the part of the show with KT and I. We go one-on-one. And now you're officially called all the shots. Have you ever played a game called Would You Rather before, Coach? Yes. All right, so everybody out there who's rocking with us, y'all know the rules. But for all of our new listeners, new followers, check this out. Here we go. Both KT and I are going to make a pitch to Coach Josh, all right? Wh whichever one of those pitches Coach likes, he's going to select that host will get a point. The first host to get two points or the best out of three will win this episode's game of championship rounds. And uh, I'm the defending champ. So uh, so I got I got a lot on the line right now, Coach. I got I got a lot we riding on this one. So I'm hoping McPherson can carry me and lift me up back to the mountaintop so we can see that light. I can grab that lightning bolt one more time. <laughs> I just I just wanted I just wanted to do that to him, Coach. All right, here we go. Without further ado, I'll get this thing kicked off. Coach, would you rather? Hire an assistant or hire like a graduate assistant. They become a coach. Then they also become a, a championship coach. And then they look back and they say, Coach Nick was the first one that gave me a chance and I owe it all to him. I did it all through the, the Coach Nick blueprint. Or coach a player who makes it to the Basketball Hall of Fame and in their speech tells you they wouldn't be there without you. Man, that's a tough one. But I'm, I'm going to go with... Um Giving that coach that first opportunity. Yeah, let's go. All right, coach. Round number two. Would you rather have Netflix come to your campus? They own McPherson campus and they doing one of those last chance you style documentaries or travel the world hosting your own food show on ESPN where you and your coaching staff interview famous athletes and celebrities as they take you to their favorite places to eat in their hometown. Man, I, 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 I love to travel, to be honest, and eat too. I like to, that, that to me sounds fun. <laughs> Wrong ass <answer>, coach. <laughs> because you know you can't, you can't outrun them. I don't know why you do that. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't wait to go see I can't you. Run. Oh, man. All right, come All on, right. Kevin. Let's go. On our show, which you can watch Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Central, we have a segment called The Drop, where B. Jones turns a sneaker guru and presents a pair of shoes that he feels are worthy of your financial donations. So for round three, both B. Jones and I are going to present a shoe to Coach. Whichever one he picks has huge ramifications because that host will win this episode's game. So, Coach, I'm going to go three, two, one, and I need for you to say, hold that sneaker. And once you do that, we're going to show you what we got. All right? Gotcha. All right. Three, two, one. Hold that sneaker. Ooh. Uh, I like the red and white. I like the red and white, too, Coach. That's why I picked it. So, B. <laughs> Jones. Put that down and play my music. And new champion. Coach, I knew it would buy me. You know what? I'll go out there and run at least. No, I'm not going to run with you, Coach. But thank you so much for rocking with us, for picking me. B. Jones, look at it again. Look at it again. Just take a look. No, look up. Look up, B. Look up. You've been talking the whole show. Look up. You see that? 
All right. Carry on. Somebody okay. can, somebody called a Russian in uh in Rocky Five for me, man. I need some <laughs> <laughs> somebody called Club Lane. I need somebody to do put some work on Coach. <laughs> 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 All right, Coach. Well, the title of the show, Sports Life Talks, you got next. Coach Josh Nichols. Now that we all watching, we all rocking with you at Coach underscore Nick underscore. What does the future hold for you, Coach? Uh, you know, my uh, my son's with me right now on the bench. He's a freshman. Uh, so he wants to be a coach as well. So I'm kind of showing him the ways a little bit. Uh, that's dope. At some, at some point, uh, we need to switch places. Uh, that's that's kind of the future. Uh, I, I do want to switch places I, and let him take over wherever he's at and me help him out and be kind of that sounding board, that person he can trust uh, growing his career. That's fine. I don't think we've that's That's a, not a, the best answer we've ever gotten. Yeah, I've never heard that creativity. Okay, all right. Well, Coach, it sounds like you already got a transition plan, and I know that's many years down the road, right? You just said you were 44 years old. So we got to ask you, what, what do you want your, your, your legacy left on this game? What do you want your imprint? When people when people go back and say, hey, you played for Coach Josh Nichols or, or on a coach that says you played against a, a, a Josh Nichols team, what do you want them to say about you? What, what do you want your name to be remembered as when you leave the game? Um, you know, really, the reason why I do this is make impact, an impact on young people's lives. And that's what I want. I, you know, yeah, I want, I want to win. I want kids to have a good experience and things like that. But when it's all said and done, when, uh, when, when people look back on their time, you know, whether it's four years, two years or whatever, they know that I had their best interests in mind and their future in mind, and that I was there for them every step of the way and beyond. Um, you know, one of the greatest things is having alums come back and talk to our current team, and they'll and they tell them, "Hey, coach, coach still texts you. You know, coach, coach still got you. Hey, I I I needed a I needed a reference for this new job. You yeah, know, I, put, I put coach. You know, those are the things that that to me is a bigger win than anything else is having that impact on young people's lives. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a mentor on our campus, not just for my team, but for everybody. That's why I love small college basketball, our small colleges. I, you know, we got 830 something students on our campus. I, I I should know all 830 of them before the year is over with. And that's awesome. When, when someone needs something, the, you know, whether it's whether it's a snack to come down, you know, I got I got food in my office, I got water in the fridge, I got protein shakes in the fridge. Come in, sit down, have a chat. What's going on in your life? That's what it's about for me. That's what my coaches did for me. That's what Rocky Kent did for me. And that's what I'm trying to give back to. That's dope. All right, Coach. So do you have any shout-outs you want to give? Um, obviously, my wife, Deanne Nichols. Um, you know, she's allowed me to be on this journey for 21 years. Um, she makes all the money, so that's a that's a huge for me. Uh, uh, small college coaches don't make a ton, so – um, you know, obviously that's my biggest shout out. And then, then my son, Luke and my daughter, Katie, um, that's, that's my world. Those four people are my world. All right. So this is the part of the show where you get a chance to call the person that you think you have next. Tell me, hey, I got a chance to rock with B Jones and KT. I told them my story. I want you to do the same thing. With that said, coach, who are you calling out? Who should have uh, next? Al Davis, Eastern Oklahoma state college. Uh, he's a former assistant of mine. He's actually a former player of mine too. One of the last guys I coached on the men's side. All right, coach Al Davis, you are officially on the clock. Coach Nichols just punched your ticket. So we got to get you on the show. We're going to be reaching out to you so we can tell your story, tell your journey to the sports life talk family. But with coach Josh Nichols, you the truth, my guy. I'm super impressed by you. I can't wait to come check out your facility, check out your campus, check out your team. You guys are doing some amazing things. You're a warrior. You're a trailblazer. You are extraordinary and elite. You deserve a yeet. Coach Josh Nichols, it's official, my guy. You got next. <laughs> All right, Sports Life Talk Nation, we thank y'all for watching this one more again. Hey, don't sign off yet. Do not do not hit that X. We got a few things we want to make sure we close out. Hey, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, IG, TikTok, anywhere. It's one word, ladies and gentlemen, Sports Life Talk. 
It's just that simple. Come hang out with us. We promise you, slide in our DMs, we slide back. Hey, follow for follow, whatever you want to do. That stuff's not important. You are important to us. Also, if you're sitting there, you're like, man, I would love to be on this show. That's a dope platform. I want to tell my story. I got to get it out there. Well, guess what? This is There's an opportunity for you to do that because Kevin and I, we can't find every amazing coach, every amazing player, every amazing administrator. So this is what we need you to do. Go to our website. SLT you you got next.com that's SLT you got next.com go to the nominations tab and either put your information in or someone you think deserves that opportunity and we'll be notified and we'll be reaching out to you and uh, auditioning you for the show and then lastly we go live every week we would love to interact with you and for you to come hang out with us it's an hour show it's fun so eat a little bit early go to go to Mount what is it now fees go to now fees a little yeah, go 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 a little bit early on Wednesday nights because uh, because we hang out, we talk sports, we talk life, pop culture, food, entertainment, sneakers. It don't matter. We all over the place. It's a fun show, and we do that every Wednesday night at eight o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Kev, man, I don't know. I'm I'm still kind of bummed about losing this one, but we got we got coach on, and I you know I think he's cool. I think he's super cool. So I'm 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 a, I'm a fine solace in that. I'm a fine positivity and inspiration in that and I'm going to let you close us out man B. Jones coach has inspired me to go and run tomorrow so when I wake up okay who am I kidding I'm going to walk really fast tomorrow coach but I'm going to get out there and do something no you know I'm out of school now B. Jones so I start working you know walking all the time three four miles a day you a hater hey coach thank you so much for rocking with us whatever you need from us please let us know and we got your back thank you Cap. I can see Kevin out there right now. Dun, 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 Hey, Sports Life Talk Nation, we love y'all. Stay safe, be blessed. Respect each other and love one another because together we are better and keep dreaming big because you never know. Your story may be the next one featured on Sports Life Talks. You got next. Yeet! It was crazy. It's, I knew you had next because you always working, you always grinding, you're in your bag because you're always working. Like in due time, I just I knew you got next. Oh, you did it, huh? Crack the code. You got next, you smashing goals. You want next, you need exposure. Well, sports like talk out the baddest show, like the baddest hut in the room. Podcast to tune into just for you to talk your shit. Talk your mushroom. You want what you eat and you should consume. Sports like talk from the late night to the afternoon, then rest repeat. Hit the like, leave a comment, or subscribe so you don't miss a beat. You got next, it's a small taste of a winning meal from a chef type of celebrity. What's up next is you, at least you better be. Yeah. You got next, yeah. I can feel it. Just like me, you got next, and what comes next? Tune in next time, and you'll see. Cause if you got next, yeah, if you got next, if you got next, then you're just like me. If you got next, if you got next, yeah, if you got next, then you know where to be. I'm talking sports life, talking this.